Oh, there we go. Hello. Okay, I was on mute. There we go. Yeah. You can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. I talked to um, Dino briefly today for a few minutes. Uh, he's going to be busy for a while, but he thinks we should have some kind of a inaugural meeting for this and um, um, such like. What kind of a meeting? Who's that word? Some kind of an inaugural meeting. Inaugural meeting. I thought that was what last week was. I guess that was an exploratory meeting or something. And, um, you know, Alexander and I had quite a big uh, argument at the end of that one. Yeah, I think I missed that, did I? Yeah, yeah you just missed it. And uh, can you summarize? Well, from my perspective, um, you know, he didn't come in in the beginning, so he didn't know the, the, the context we were talking in, you know, we're trying to define a goal. So there was a little side kind of a story about um, um, the whole, will computers take over the world or whatever? <laughs> and, you know, he kept kind of going on about it. And I said, well, I think it will. But, and, and then he, in my mind, he, got, he, he said things to me like, no, you are wrong. And then... Um, he really kept interrupting. I had towards the end. I mean, this is how I feel it. It went. Um, I had to interrupt him just to be able to try to finish a point. And I, I just felt he was very rude and belaboring a point that wasn't really part of the conversation. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't feel it was useful to continue. Yeah, what was evident on Skype didn't look very um, promising. No, I mean, he's, he's, he's a good guy and everything, but, you know, we're trying to actually do something. And I understand the whole systems and human side and all of that, but it's not done in concert with producing something. Then it really is just talk, you know, and, and that's maybe he's not interested or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be, look, we've, you know, people in the group who had little arguments before, I have no problems working with them. Uh, but we, I really think we need to, all of us, as we discussed last week, or as I at least emphasized, put, put a goal on the wall and see if we can at least agree on the goal, because I think we're even different in that area. Well, I think I was trying to mention last week that that goal, while admirable, is beyond our reach and has been beyond our reach for as long as we've been talking. Well, you mean to define a goal? Yeah, actually to actually align enough to say, this is one goal that all of us are actually going to support. I think we've been trying that and that has been in the too hard category. And I think that if we keep pushing on that, we create these little arguments that seem to come about. So my point last week was that we're each involved in a whole you know, set of activities, you know, each of us, and uh, we should inform and support each other and where possible form some alignment, but that to choose the selection and crafting of a single goal as the objective of this forum, I think possibly drives people away. I think we can do a goal, but I think the problem we've had is one of, um, as, as I know you agree, of having a constant fight between tool and human rather than having them align it you know, to support each other, you know, which is why I think if we do go forward with some kind of dialogue, we would have to have specific time for one and then for another. So we don't just um, have that issue again. You know, I would love to spend more time being involved with a, you know, human side, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, when I do that um, before, um, the tool side is just utterly thrown away again and again, and I'm just not interested in that because I can't really contribute much to the human side. And um, it, it means that I believe strongly, and I don't think you disagree, that we need the tool system to support the human side. So we can't build things to support if we don't have a, a dialogue. So. so can I propose something which I thought worked well before, which was that each of us take turns moderating these conversations. Yeah, uh, we, we talked about that, I remember, and to an extent that's fine. However, I think that instead of having Dino's day and so on, I think we should divide it into functional. You know, are we today really talking about 
the human system or are we today talking about tool system or are we talking about integration? I think to me that feels artificial. And I think that uh, if a human system issue comes up on a tool system day, what do we do about it? You know, do we park it? Do we discuss yeah, we it? it? Yeah, we park it because, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do a PhD and I cannot take that nonsense in my life. You know, Emily's pregnant, lots of things going on. Um, so to have a continuous barrage as it's been over the years now of we talk about what needs to be done. And, you know, anytime I say, oh, in order to support that, what do you need? And every single time, other than a little bit of time with Dino's holoscopy, so no, 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 we have to work on the human side first. Yes, but, you know, until the human side is perfect, when are we going to talk about the tools? Oh, no, no, we're not tool, but, you know, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't like that kind of conversation. I do like the fact that... Uh... I don't know what I do like. What I do like is that we start and that we iterate and that we learn and that we modify our habits as we go along. Yeah, we tried that. No, we haven't. We really haven't. We haven't really started. No, but I'm, I'm telling you now, the way that he spoke to me last week, right? was so forget that you know the whole personal dynamic thing but it's just i believe that we must first of all all of us try to find define a goal i talked to him for a while yesterday you know he has a goal he wants to have something to show by doug at 50. a big thing and he's trying to raise money for it and he's not part of this dialogue because it doesn't really go anywhere, right? If, if we can even define that, you know, if we want to produce a environment where academics produce truly useful work for so-and-so, which is presented in a so-and-so accessible way or whatever it might be, that's fine. But so, you know, all we, the only thing that we keep talking about is co-evolution. You know, you can't co-evolve unless you accept what the environment is. That's a primitively horrible simplification of what we've been trying to do. I'm saying that we need all of us to try to write down what we're trying to do. I agree. I agree with that. I think we should start with first what, you know, each of us is trying to do and then see where we can possibly find some alignment. And I guess CCCs were an attempt at that, but that seems uh, even a bit too hard. I'm not interested in alignment. I'm not interested in that process because, um, you know, what I am doing for my thesis and what I'm doing with author is what I'm doing. If someone wants to join, fine, you know, come and, and do whatever you want. But, you know, talk to me about that. But when it comes to the bigger picture, I don't want to make what I'm doing happen in an isolated environment. Right, it needs to be part of a bigger thing. Right, and if, if if we cannot together figure out what that is, then you know we're not we're just not collaborating at all. I mean, the problem, I have two problems with you. Okay, just to come into that now that we're talking. Number one, uh, last summer I asked you to write your statements, and I didn't see that happening. You had only in the brain, only when we're together. You know, you didn't produce. A paragraph of this is what you want. Found that very frustrating. The second thing, which is kind of worse, is during the political discussion, right? You posted quite a few times negative things about Hillary. When it was pointed out that it was not true, did you accept that? No, you said it was illustrative. So to be in a discussion with you about Doug style stuff. You know, you use the term ground truth and odd citations and so on. But when it, but the rubber hits the road, you don't mind smearing people. That's, That's actually an incorrect uh, characterization of what I was doing. Okay. The picture of, no, hang on, let me just finish then, and I promise to not interrupt you. The picture of the, you know, the Hillary witness who was, accident, you know, was in this mysterious car crash. I did a two second reverse Google image search and showed that picture was actually from Australia. You left it up. Clearly, it was a fake story. Down. Hmm? 
I thought I subsequently took it down. I mean, there are cases where, yes, when, when presented with evidence that it was false, yes, I did take it down. I think I did that at least twice. So yes, if there were, let's say, time browser-like citations back to ground truth, that's exactly what we need, right? Absent that, you know, we have a mass of things, you know, all of whom each side is claiming is fake news. And yes, when it's a you know, fabricated thing, yes, I did take it down. Okay. But the yeah. insistence that there is a set of people who are trusted, you know, might have been true in the 50s, but isn't true this year. So by not agreeing or not even considering that we have to expand our sources, you know, you're just playing into the same old uh, mind games. So you have to expand the sources. And yes, when you expand sources, some of them will turn out to be wrong. But if we had tools like citations and ground truth and epistemology and, you know, all of these uh, characteristics of them, yes, what you did would have been much more immediate, much more evident, and probably could have been even automated. And that's what we want. Well, I don't know. I, I don't believe in ground truth. I believe in perspectives, right? Outside of maybe the hard sciences. There are and facts. If we don't agree on facts, then that's going to be difficult to have a conversation around. In fact, yes, they're not 100.000% certain. No, they're not. But there are protocols under which we actually say, hmm, this looks pretty damn true. And in fact, those are provided as practices and principles by science. I, I have with facts as well. I mean, the word facts comes from the criminal justice system, you know, which is why you have phrases like accessory after the fact. Fact used to mean something got someone convicted, right? If you're talking about data and then analysis of the data, that, that, that language I can agree with. That's what That's, I'm talking about. Right, because if you talk about, let's say, an economic policy, uh, you know, someone can state so-and-so as a negative and, and exactly the same thing as a positive because it is obviously the analysis and, and, and so on that matters, not necessarily the one thing. So yeah, we, we, can, we can build things, but there has to be, you know, we have to start writing things down. We have to start referring to it. So you didn't like the way I wrote things down. You didn't like the way I put things into a brain. You want them in paragraphs rather than in nodes. Um, I think that it's, it's very important that these things are shareable. And um, those nodes the were shareable. If you have the brain, the brain, yeah. No, you can actually use it, a web-based interface to it, which I did give you links to. Yeah, I mean, I, I really feel that um, concept maps and so on are very, very useful, but uh, they have to be in a common, they have to be at least collapsible into something common, you know, because it becomes difficult to, to write comments Right. Despite the fact that they are linkable, so you actually could cite them, right? And then write a comment yourself, which is what you were proposing, right? You were saying, I write something, and then you write something as a commentary follow-up to it in your space. That's what you were saying. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't remember saying addressable things because also when you do a kind of a the brain thing, Oh my God, sorry, there's something in the background on Facebook. Oh my God, sorry, uh, I shouldn't even have the browser open. Just some idiot weightlifter. Uh, what, what I'm saying is um, the mind maps and so on, they don't have a narrative that is explicit. Right? So if you map things, so it's very, very good for some things, um, you know, mapping relationships and so on. But once you see the relationship, it's harder to say, we must do this because of that. Yeah, and that's really the argument behind why Global Viz is separate from Global Sim. And the guided tours and navigations and documents, you know, and presentations exist for a purpose. So I agree with you on that. There's just no single thing that does it all. And that's the problem. Um, so let me also agree with you that there's a need for a larger overarching purpose. 
for me, at least, you know, in the context of a PFTF and Engelbart, I'm there, you know, I've got my eight principles and that captures for me what I need to be doing. Now, whether that makes sense for anybody else, I don't really know, but that conversation has seemed difficult, right? People see them. I don't know what people think when they see them, you know, there seems to be no feedback. I think maybe we need to find a, um, a kind of a combination of the, what you're talking about there and the goal, as in we need to have, find a way to find a shared goal and then we need to find a way to say what we're doing because I'm only dealing with documents and I'm only dealing with documents that have to do with producing an, an academic document. I'm not interested in anything else for my life now. But I would like to know if that fits in under a heading of what everyone else in the group is doing. You know, because right now, so yesterday I took your comments about notes and annotations and changed the documents. So thank you very much for that. Today I have to look at interactions. What should we be able to do? Why? But if I try to do that for everything, I'm fucked. We're going to go in the same circles we've gone for years. It'll only be for this use case. But I think it would be very worthwhile if we can then have discussions in the group where, for example, something like that that I'm working on can be brought up for someone else to say, well, in this thing that I'm working on, it doesn't make sense. Or, hey, can we standardize something here so it can work together, whatever it might be. I think that's perfectly appropriate. And I'm glad you like my comments. And I'm ho I hope the list of interaction types is also useful to you. Yeah, let me uh, look at that. It, it's very different. That, that one is very different from uh, what I'm working on now. Um, but you allude to it by saying, you know, when we interact, what do we need to be able to do? Yeah, that, uh, I'm not interested in the, the same way as you now. I'm interested in it in this way that, uh, um, you know, little things like when you click on a comment in author now, Sorry, when you click on a note, little thing comes up and there's a link. That link isn't live. That link has to be live. So wherever you see any of these units, it has to have the rich interactivity that it has everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And those interactivities have to include blah, blah, blah. You know, that's what has to be listed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not really talking about like collaborative document writing that Tamar is interested in. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in a very role-based document writing where a postgraduate student writes something, an advisor has a specific role in how to comment and reply to that, etc. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is completely appropriate for you, and I think that these conversations, whether they happen on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, whatever, okay, still are opportunities for me to understand that, for you to understand what I'm doing, okay, for Dino to do similarly, and for us to have that little mutual co-informing process and other than that each of us could be saying okay now how do I make sense out of this picture and what's the grander picture and you know how does it all fit together and you know how to what Frodo's doing plug into what Dino's doing what I'm doing plugs into all of that we can each have our interpretation of that so long as we know the materials that are presented by each of us so that we can all come up with that little aggregate Okay, and until we do, I don't know what these conversations are. I kind of agree with that, but what I also see is we have to, you know, try to, okay, well, what I think would be good is if we have discussions that are based on collaboration, for instance. And, you know, I'm interested in collaboration by documents predominantly. And then if let's say Alexander has a notion of collaboration within an entirely different space, you know, that fits that conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may, because I, I would be very happy if someone says the way that you've designed so-and-so, I don't think it contributes to the goal. Maybe you want to think about so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to make these things work together. I mean, Timur wants to have a web-based system. I don't want to have a web-based system. And by the way, do you recognize that we have had that conversation? Yeah, yeah, we've had that many times. And the yes. problem is, you know, he's getting funding, but I don't want to design something you do in a browser. But then again, I am actually the headquarter for the World Wide Web Consortium is actually part of my group. 
plus there's going to be a lot of interesting VR content based on the web. So, you know, anyway. But we do need to start building. And, um, you know, the time browser is one of those things. It's bloody easy to do. Um, I met with the guy who was in charge of um, Hansard, which is the official parliament record here in the UK. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's a very interesting idea, but Hansard is a written document and it's the official document of government dialogue. If there is a video to back it up. Exactly. What then becomes official, is that right? You know, so, but these are things we can, we can make happen quite easily. You know, Vince coming back to the future of text and I'd like to be able to give him something and says, look, give this to the YouTube people. You know, this is all it is, is a format that if they see a document uploaded as these numbers in the beginning, it means real world stuff. You know, put it in. You know, we, we need to collaborate on this, but with Dino and Alexander, these things immediately go, oh, it's too early to build tools. Okay, in my uh, more depressed moments, here's what goes through my mind. My mind says, just blog. Just write specifications. Doesn't matter whether or not anybody sees them, talks to you, gives you feedback, just write specifications. Because that's what I can do, that's what I know I can you know, build out of the use cases and stakeholders and scenarios that I've got in my mind. Just do it. And if nobody you know, sees them for 25 years, what the fuck, you know? But well, why don't you take complete ownership of the time browser now then? We'll support you. We've agreed on the basics. You know, and just interrogate Dino and Alexander to the point where they change the subject and we just find a way to act on it. Actually, I will invite that, but I'm not going to press on that. Okay? okay? We've done that. It's such an example because all you need is the recorder to know, I know you know this, but I'm just revisiting for our discussion. The, the recording system needs to know exactly when to start a recording. And it puts that as the beginning of the name. The reader software just needs to know that, that what that means. And it does the arithmetic to see what time into it means. And that gives us unrivaled benefits. You know, if you put something together with that, or even just write it out as a thing, that should be easy to do. Yep, that's a start. The reason I talked to, okay, let's, let me just ask you some things. So the document um, you commented on, you commented on documents, right? So just to check something here with you. Uh, actually, do you mind spending a second on that? Kind of as a test case. Since it's just you and me, we can go wherever we want to go. Okay, I'm going to give you this. I'm giving it to you in Skype. Uh, it's the link you've already seen. I'm giving it in the main group. But before we leave, leave I have two more updates. Okay. Okay, let's do this briefly then. All right. Uh, and then I look forward to your updates. Okay, I'm clicking your link now. Yes, this is a WordPress version of what you had written. Yeah, so the reason I did this is that um, I wanted to know the difference between annotations and notes. That's where it started. So the, the notes slash writings, I call that thoughts. Absolutely, do they need to be interactable and connectable with other things? I agree with your comment entirely. Mm -hmm. That's the second, second thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But if, if, you're, if your physical or virtual scrapbook includes something that exists in the world, that's basically a citation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting something down on top of something that exists, that's an annotation, mm -hmm. which means add notation, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you also commented on comments. Comments, I've highlighted, I've changed it here is something we write on a document. It's an annotation, but it's not for our benefit. It is for the benefit of the person who wrote it. Wait, say that again. Uh, a um, comment is an annotation on a document or something, which is not for our benefit in the future. It is designed as a benefit for the person who wrote the document. So it's direct feedback 
on the or to other ways expression really. of that thought. Yes. So if you write a document and I write a note for me, it's an annotation. If you write a document and I write something that is intended for you, it's a comment. Isn't that a reasonable distinction? It sounds reasonable. Let me think about that. So in other words, comments are intended to disappear once the document has been revised. Uh, in a sense, not necessarily. It's nice, of course, to keep track of them. but Of course, the it goes into history. Yes, you can view it, blah, blah, blah. But in the final form, the comment is gone because it's been incorporated. I wouldn't say that's the primary thing, but uh, I think your interpretation is something I agree with. Okay, let's just run with that for now. So writings are nodes, citations are links, annotations are additional nodes on existing nodes, and then comments are like little yellow stickies on nodes that eventually disappear once the node has been revised. I'm just writing down something about. That makes sense. Yeah, with one um, one exception or not exception uh, caveats, they can all be notes that can relate to all and any other notes. But I, I agree with what you said, but we just have to be careful with the boundary. I agree that a thought is basically kind of a main node, uh, which brings something into it through citation or an annotation. Yeah, yeah. so I, I agree with your language, just wanted to. And then just finally, uh, with the document, I called it a self-contained addressable or portable framing because I agree with your addressable thing. It's just that we're living in a legacy world with documents and folders and stuff like that. Because of course, any one of these could be in a document alone, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a, that's a secondary issue not a primary one. So I think uh, you've made some progress. I, I agree with what you've come up with. I'm glad I was able to help you come up with this. Uh, what next? Uh, your updates. Ah, so I have been invited, changing uh, tack. I've been invited into two new conversation threads. Okay. With two new uh, communities. One took place yesterday, and it was called the Next World uh, Set of Conversations. Evidently, there's a group of people around the concept of teal and reinventing organizations that includes uh, George Poor and uh, Reiner Leprechtsing and uh, Viola and a few other people. There were about 10 people in this conversation who gather in roads in Europe uh, about two or three times a year. And the theme is teal organizations, how people need to show up in teal organizations and reinventing organizations. So that was yesterday. I, uh, they started very early. They started around, uh, I don't know, six or seven in the morning and I kind of got there a little bit late, but now I've connected with some of them and one of them in fact is uh, Chris Clark here in Seattle. So I'm gonna try and get a better sense of what's going on in that community through him. And their conversations take a very different feel to them. There's a lot of silence in their conversations. Okay. They wait for something to really sink in before someone actually then offers to speak again. And I noted that, and evidently I don't understand the organization super well yet, but I do note that as a very remarkable characteristic of their conversations. So that's community number one. And community number two, excuse me, you got a comment on that? No, I just said interesting. Okay. Community number two is uh, Fleming Funch, whom I met through John Keldon and a project called Senius 
and there's probably another eight or ten people around them. And his conversation thread is called Uncomfortable Conversations. And I've not yet attended that because the very first one of them is in approximately 76 minutes. So uh, I am curious to know how that thread and that community operates. Uh, and as I said, uh, there's a whole track around a set of projects that has already been cited. Uh, and if you know John Keldon or if you know that particular community, then uh, you probably have a better understanding than I do. So anyway, I'm yeah. about to participate in that in about an hour mm -hmm. and we'll report back. So I'm uh, curious that there are communities that are experimenting with different styles of dialogue, different styles of being and showing up and different tools to uh, enable some of that. By the way, uh, Seniors is one of those things that you might want to take a look at at some time. It's very immersive, but it's immersive to the extent that it attempts to bring a different flavor to conversations. Interesting. By the way, do you have an interesting interest in the upcoming VR revolution directly? I was trying to do VR 20 years ago, way too early. Are you getting a Sony VR? Well, you know, my son already has one, so I'm trying to get time to play with it. Uh, I have to fix a few other things with my finances before I can start playing with toys again. But yes, eventually that is a huge, I mean, in fact, uh, didn't you not see the posting I made yesterday on Facebook regarding uh, the ability to draw in 3D space? Did you not see yeah. that one? Uh, I, I don't know if I saw it. I saw something like, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, I've seen that, the tilt brush. Obviously, I look at uh, Robert Scoble's things as well. He's obviously very involved. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I don't think I'm ready to, um, to go there. One of my two advisors, he said, uh, oh, VR, it's basically the same as having a big screen. And to a huge extent, he's right. But uh, of course, in a very real way, he's utterly wrong. But I haven't been able to come up with something compelling to challenge that view yet. So that's why I'm still focusing primarily on the rectangle. Well, I hope you do understand. All I've been trying to say with regard to uh, shared um, thought space and manipulable idea nodes has been with this idea of a virtual 3D space that we can plant you know, thoughts into, draw connections into, revise, reconnect, you know, spin around, re-perspective, uh, change the view, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's always been in my mind uh, ever since um, I've been able to do it in 2D and I've wanted to do it in 3D in virtual space, in conversation space. Yeah. Yeah, we need to, we need to start experimenting there. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, um, if you don't have already, you desperately need to get Battlefield on PlayStation. I think I did buy it when you told me to buy it. No. I think I own it now. No, that's Battlefield 4. Hello. Oh, what did you say? Battlefield 5? So long ago. Yeah, Battlefield 1. Yeah, because it's World War 1. Oh. They do a lot of really interesting things in there. And the um, day before yesterday, we're still living, well, we're still living with Emily's father, and um, he was out of the house for the evening. So I played a 55 inch 4K TV, but more importantly, I had the volume quite high yep and you know when you fire a rifle and it almost feels like you're firing a rifle because it's a similar volume such a different experience i think we can learn so much from the way that these guys design their um, interactions e even just the act of doing a thing is so elegant and so visceral and um, yeah it's fantastic so the standard deluxe or ultimate edition all of them um, I'm not sure. There's something called a premium pass or something, but that's uh, $130. Well, for the ultimate one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit expensive. Normal one is probably okay. Actually. I think the biggest drawback is just, you don't get some of the content delivered the very day it comes out. So it goes from 60 to $130. <laughs> They're very, very good at uh, gradated pricing. Hmm. 
Anyway, those are my two updates, the two different kinds of communities and conversation threads. I'm, uh, oh, I, I might as well bring in two more updates. And that is that uh, when I came up with my draft personal life statement that I circulated among you, right. uh, it turns out that this community is one that I did not get much feedback on, but there's another community that I actually did get quite a bit of feedback on. And so I've actually been enjoying my interactions with them. And just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, that little one liner attempts to collect all the things that I'm trying to do and also serves as an invitation to conversation. And where people seem to be too smart and too busy, those conversations don't happen. But in other contexts, they do. And I haven't yet really figured out what the real difference is yet. All I know is some conversations are taking place and some are not. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I can understand the difference there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last time we spoke, I know that Dino was a bit frustrated. He didn't have time. We did say next time, Dino, you get to start. And I've seen no interest on his part to follow up on this particular call, even to say it doesn't work for me time-wise. I haven't even seen that. Yeah, no, I think he will uh, come up with something some dates. It'll be off to the 15th, so which is just, well, that's tomorrow. So sometimes next week, I think. Okay. Um, next week, uh, okay, so do you want to keep this conversation going or are you uh, frustrated enough that you don't know why? No, we'll, um, no, that definitely. We'll see what we can do. How is Gail doing? Are you guys still in touch? She is trying to grow up. She visits a lot and uh, she's got a job now that actually pays really well. Um, she's making the equivalent of, of at least 50 or 60K uh, pre-tax. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and she appears to want to, you know, really, really uh, clean up um, some of the things that have bothered me in the past. Uh, it's not perfect, so we still, it's like two steps forward, one step back. Um, but yeah, I would say that I can see the effort there. Yeah, that's very good. And the baby is now what, 20 weeks long or so? Um, no, next week 20, so good guess. Uh. How is Emily doing? Did she go through that initial first trimester discomfort or any of that? Yeah, she did. But uh, yeah, she's doing okay. Yeah, she's doing very well. And we're doing very well. It's uh, exciting to anticipate, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Wait, did you or did you not decide to know the sex of the baby? Uh, we're finding out in a week today. Oh, so you do. You know, with my first two, uh, we kept it to a surprise until birth. Right. The third one, Dorothy was old enough that they mandated a, um, a uh, what was that? God, I used to know the name of this. Anyway, they had to do a, a special probe just to check the health. So the doctor knew on the third one, but we still didn't know on the third one until birth. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, Frodo, let's, uh, let's talk again next week, yeah. You want to do, keep this on Wednesdays? I don't, hang on, I don't know. Uh, well, no, uh, two o'clock next week, I'm finding out if I'm going to be a father to a boy or a girl, so that's not good timing. Oh, come uh, on, what's more important? Come on, geez, Frodo. Jeez. Exactly. Um, let's say um, pick Thursday. Thursday. Pick Thursday. Thursday. Okay, Thursday? All right, we'll do it yeah. Thursday. Uh, I'll leave a message. Well, yeah, we'll leave a message in uh, <laughs> Skype for Dino. Well, uh, this has been recorded. Do you mind if we share this with Alexander and Dino or the rest of the Amigos? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Talk Bye for now. Okay. Later.